there and welcome to this exciting Libre Atom 3D tutorial. Today we're going to talk about what you need to do when you've made this super cool model and now you want to put it into a 2D drawing for a variety of reasons. Maybe you want to document it, maybe you want to give it to somebody else to manufacture, maybe you want to take it to the hardware store so you know what to buy. All of these are good reasons and without further ado let's talk about how you do that. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have your model open. Now, there's some other ways that you could go about starting a 2D drawing, but when you're first starting out, this is probably the easiest. Go ahead and open the model, and then make sure that it's saved. Um, if that Save button is uh, able to be clicked, go ahead and click it. And this is especially important. Maybe you've just created a brand new part, and you're super excited and want to throw it into a 2D drawing, and you haven't saved it yet. You won't be able to do it. So uh, just get that out of the way and save it. And then once it's saved, you're going to right click on the name of the part and select make drawing of this design. The first thing that pops up is our new sheet properties dialog box. And this basically defines how big is the sheet on which we're working and are there any uh, title blocks and things like that. So if you want to go with a templates based standards approach, you can select template. I mean, you can select one of the different options that we have here um, or you can make your own. If, uh, if, if that's something that you'd like to do. Perhaps for most Atom 3D users, um, you know, a full title block may be overkill. Maybe you want to just uh, print it out to go to the hardware store. You've got a printer at home. And so we're going we're gonna to take that approach. We'll select blank sheet, eight and a half by 11, and we'll press okay. So we've opened a new 2D drawing workspace and it's asking us what are the first views that we want to create, the standard views? So the first thing to be aware of is that uh, step one is going to be to define the front view orientation. That is shown here with a preview of the 3D model. And the way that you define it is by clicking these arrows. So I can adjust what the front view is defined as by doing that. And then this definition is then carried over into whatever views that we're gonna select. So in our case, we have the front view selected and by default, front, top, and right are selected. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and modify that a little bit. Um, by looking at the model, you can probably guess that if uh, the front view and the right view, looking at it this way, are probably gonna be the same because the model is symmetric. So we don't really need that guy. Uh, we do want to leave the top view, and maybe we want uh, one of these angle views as well uh, to make the, uh, the drawing a little bit uh, easier for the layperson to, to look at, and that will become obvious in a second. Next thing you're going to choose is the view type. This is a really simple decision. Choose standard views. Don't choose draft views. You almost will never have a reason to do that. Almost so little reason that you don't even have to worry about that this even exists. Choose draft, or standard, sorry. Uh, and now we're going to press OK. And now we're presented with a preview uh, on our 8.5 by 11 uh, template that we've selected. And when I single click the mouse, we have our views projected. So this is a really great start. Now we need to kind of size these appropriately to the template that we're using. Otherwise, it'll just be too small and hard to read. and. Nobody wants that. So the first thing we'll do is you'll notice when you when you hover over a view, the red box around it highlights, and that indicates to you that the view itself is currently selected or, or about to be selected. And that contrasts with, if I hover over you know specific sketch figures, that's not gonna select the view. That's gonna select the figure that's, uh, that's highlighted. So anyway, let's hover over a view. So we get the red box. We'll single left click and we see that this new toolbar is, uh, is open. And we're gonna go over to change scale, and we're just gonna kinda turn this down a little bit, something that looks reasonable for our, our page size. And we'll do the same thing on this guy. And now that that's done, we probably wanna do some pretty basic uh, you know, moving of the views. So I'm gonna single left click on the view, and I see this little pan button up here that I'm gonna I'm going to click and drag to where I want it to be. Same thing here. 
Now you'll notice that this view, when I move it, it moves two views at the same time. And that's because this is the front view. The front view might have several other views aligned to it. Uh, and when you move the front view, it'll move the rest. Now, that is, there's some kind of a limitation there because perhaps, you know, you notice I can't move this other view left and right because it's aligned to the front view. But maybe I really want to. Well, the way you do that is you'd right click it and you would uncheck align. And that will allow you to move the view wherever you want. In our case, though, we're going to leave it aligned. And uh, now we're kind of ready to get started. So let's start with our dimensions. We'll select the dimension tool. And we're going to start clicking on some figures. So in this case, this outer dimension. And I'm just single clicking to select the figure and then single clicking to place the dimension. Now in some cases, you're going to notice, you know, if you move the cursor in certain locations, you'll get a different style of dimension. Don't fret. If you want, for example, this style here, but you want it to be over here and it doesn't seem like, you know, you can do that. Well, you can. You'd want to just place it somewhere. Whoops. And then you would just single click and drag it to move it. So just be aware that, um, that you can do that. We're not going to go through all of this, uh, this process, but that's the basic approach. You'll select figures and you'll dimension them. Now there's another way that you can dimension things. Uh, we up here, we were selecting single figures and then depending on the kind of figure, you know, if it's a circle, we're going to get some kind of diameter dimension. If it's a line, we'll get the length for example, um, here. But a lot of times you're going to be dimensioning between multiple things. So in this case, I want to know the whole height of this. And so I would single click on the top and then I would single click on the bottom. And now I can place that dimension. So this is going to be an extremely common workflow uh, to get, you know, all kinds of dimensions that you might need. The next thing to be aware of is that depending on the, the type of the combination of things, you're going to get different outcomes. So we were selecting two parallel lines, and as a result, we were getting a distance between them dimension. But if I select this line and this line, which are not parallel, I'm going to get an angle dimension. So by going through uh, the different you know, combinations of figures, you're going to be able to fully dimension with angles, with radii, diameters, um, and lengths uh, for your full 3D model. Now, we notice that we've got some interior detail here, this hole, and we have some holes here as well. And we're feeling like we can't really fully see inside um, this model to, to kind of accurately detail that. We've got a few options there. Um, I'm going to deactivate sketch. And if I single click this, um, I can go up to some of these different options. So the edge display, I can select to visible and hidden. And that's going to give me some of the, the interior perspective that I might not otherwise have had. Uh, so if I wanted to leave this on, I certainly could. And you'll notice that we, you know, it, it kind of gives us everything. Any, any occluded line, all of these holes, the interior, everything is going to be shown. And maybe that's what I want. Maybe it's not. In our case, it's not what we want. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and change that back. And I'll notice if I single click this again, I don't seem to be getting the, uh, the pop-up again. Um, if that ever happens to you, press the space bar. And that's how you get that back. Otherwise, you could click away from it and then click back on it. But just remember the space bar is there if you need it. I'm going to go back to view display and I'm going to put it back on visible. And all that interior stuff's going to go away. We're going to attack that problem a little bit differently by creating a new view type. And the view type that we're going to create is a section view. So in the insert views area of the toolbar, we'll select section view. Whoops. Um, because I already had that view selected, 
it allowed me to kind of skip a step and I want to make sure that uh, you see the full workflow. So if you don't have anything selected, like we don't now, and you click section view, it's going to say select an existing sketch or select a view to create a new sketch. So all you need to know about this is just pick the view that you want to create the section view on. So in this case, that's this guy. I'll single click him. And now we're taken into kind of a reduced sketching toolbar, which is called the standard section view tools. 99 out of 100 times, the only thing you're going to do here is make a line. So I'm going to make a single line. You know, it's probably going to be right down the middle. Um, but your mileage may vary. And once you make that line, click create view at the top left. Now you have to pick a side and you can see a preview based on where your mouse is. So in our case, we'll just look this direction and we'll move the mouse to preview and then we'll single click to place. So now we've got a section view, which gives us some of this good interior detail. Uh, we can get in and maybe we can make a dimension. You know, we can dimension all these, these, uh, these holes here. And be aware that uh, you have lots of options as far as the view types. We've kind of touched on, I'm going to deactivate sketch mode so I can click on the views. So on this view, we, we kind of talked a little bit about, you know, how you can change the display, um, you know, between visible and visible and hidden. Um, and you can do lots of, you can change the scale. Uh, you can add, you know, centers and center lines and, and things like that. In this case, we've got a, a view with, with a crosshatch, a section view, and we can hover over change crosshatch. And right now it's selected to use model pattern. And this is based on whatever material you might've selected in your, uh, in your part creation. But a lot of times you don't really care about that. You know, this is for you and you just want it to, to kind of be as visible or as obvious as you want it to be because you're the one going to the hardware store. So. You can uncheck that and you can pick, you know, whatever style you want. Um, doesn't really matter, whatever you like. Um, and different styles based on the scale might have different levels of obviousness. But for our case, we'll just pick steel and we'll change the scale, you know, way down. And maybe we'll make it red. And there you go. Uh, slap a few more dimensions on here and we'll be good to go. Uh, the last thing you just might want to know is that you can make notes. So, you know, maybe you want to put a title. You'll see this little red dot that's asking me where I want the location of the note to be. So before you do anything else, put that somewhere. And then you can go up here and you can type, you know, my model. You can make it a, uh, whatever font you like. And you can always move this around. And then another use for notes is for, uh, for detailing purposes. So, you know, maybe, um, maybe you want to make a note for this particular, uh, this particular feature here. So in this case, you know, this is a special hole. You might want to show a leader line. And if you select this, you'll be able to attach the note to uh, some kind of a figure on the model. So you see, as I hover over these guys, the, the line lights up red. That means that it's selected. So I'll go ahead and click that and click apply. And there you go. So that's the basics of making a 2D drawing. Um, you may have drawings that require you to add even more views. Not a problem. You can go up here and just click standard view. You know, pick another view if you want. Maybe we want the other side. Um, of course, they look the same since they're symmetric, but um, you get the idea. And if you want to delete views, you just select them and press delete. Or you can hover over any particular view from the Design Explorer, and you'll have access to hiding, uh, the different view types, edge displays, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully this has been helpful and you're off to making your 2D drawings.